All right, back at Average uh, Best Cornhole, and uh, today we got uh, a new treat, and we're going to be talking about the Viper RS, and we brought along uh, some of our other Viper sets that we have, and we're going to try and do our best and explain what the difference is and why this may be a better bag, but it's probably going to be a little tough because uh, the Viper R is... Maybe one of the best bags. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, so, yeah, we, we still have our 2024 set that is fully broken in, which was a good gauging point for us, and then... Yeah. We did get some 2025 Viper R's, so we could do everything with these new RS's. And we'll try to tell you everything we did and compare it to. So first off, for starters, I'm not a fan of the new name, only because a lot of people refer to these as Viper R's. You know, let me go grab my Viper R's. So now what do we have, Viper RS's? Is this, <laughs> it's just, it's a little, I think they could have been a little bit more creative with that. But anyways, uh, they were advertising these as being the minimum thickness, width, and diagonal that they could be. They have a tribrid, tribrid, like hybrid fill in them. And then also they gave us a sweet uh, measuring device when we ordered them at launch. And the seam lock, which we're going to talk about a little bit. It's, it's not as bad. You might have heard some rumors. We don't think it's that bad, but the whole point of the seam lock is to stop it from stretching out and getting too floppy. All right, right into the baggage and the speeds on these, all the same materials. So we got a you know nine fast side rating and a six uh, on the slow side for these. Out of the box, they're probably a six, but they definitely slow down at least what we think you know below a six. Mm -hmm. Right, it's probably five and a half, five, really just depending on how how broken they broken in they are. Yeah, we you can watch on our ramp videos. I was really hoping there was going to be some differences, but. Pretty much all three of these sets were about the same. And I was thinking that the Viper RS's, <laughs> because normally a smaller bag is faster, but I think because it's a lighter bag, which we'll get to, it was still about the same speed as that Viper R. Materials here, and we won't go into it too much, uh, because again, they all have the same materials. And uh, these new Viper RS's from Ultras, uh, they do carry the Viper Fast Side. Viper Fast Side, yeah. yeah. And cool. um, they also see the pretty common Viper R uh, Carpet Side. The hybrid oh, carpet okay, so that's, that's we good. We see that on a lot of bags from time to time. Yeah, we're and, familiar uh, with that one, yeah. So glad to see it again here on the Viper RS's. <laughs> Moving on to the template, we did touch on it, and I tried so hard to take, like, comparison pictures. I was even doing videos. It just – nothing would really show that it is a little bit smaller. But it is a little bit smaller, especially when you measure them, you find that out. And it's just, it's just so difficult to show. I thought it was going to be smaller, but I guess since it's all on the minimum. So I would say definitely that the Viper RS is the medium template. And then these Viper R's are the larger template that we're all used to. Yeah, you can definitely feel it in, in the hand. If you're throwing both of them, you know, what we did, we were just taking turns switching back between the two bags. I could clearly feel it in my hand that it was smaller. That's definitely what it was most noticeable. Right. Moving on to the fill and flop. And um, we've been holding on to these a little bit longer than normal. We wanted at least on like three or four weeks and see, you know, try to prove that stretch and see how yeah. floppy they get. And they seem to be holding true. But these year-old Vipers are clearly more floppier than the newer Vipers. But if you do look at these RSs, this is going to be hard to see. It seems to be a little bit less floppier than the same age Viper R's. Yeah, uh, 100% for me. Uh, most exciting thing for me once I saw they were coming out with this RS is exactly that. Less stretch, they're not going to overbreak in, and they're not going to be too floppy, which is why I always struggled to commit mm -hmm. to, the, to the regular Viper R. So I was super excited for that, and I'm seeing it. You know, like Craig said, we really worked these bags quite a bit to see, you know, how that held up, and it's I still get a great hand feel on it. It's not sagging in my hand, and I can feel comfortable throwing it every time, which, which is what I always struggle with these uh, the green ones that we've had for a mm -hmm. while can never get a comfortable feel because it just overflopped. And I think the seam lock's doing its job. Yeah, and then, and then the fill, that's the other difference in it, that the tribrid, yeah. like hybrid, yeah. we keep going through our head. And then the regular Viper R, it just pretty much has all flat fill in it, which I think we all know that. So a tri, that you think tri blend, so it's probably got rounds, flats, yeah. you know, discs, whatever, whatever mixture they decided to put in there. I do want to touch on the weights a little quickly, you know, with these because the Viper RS, I mean, they are a lighter bag. They, they average 15.52 ounces as the normal Viper R's were like 15.78 for the 2025s and 15.88 for the 2024s. The, the 2025s were actually way more consistent among the four bags 
than the 2024s were. Yeah. And I wonder if that's they're paying closer attention because, you know, they're on the minimums, especially with these RSs. I feel like they kind of have to be, yeah, right? Because, yeah. you know, 0 0.02 grams later, yeah. you're under the minimum. So. Yeah, you're, you're pushing a, you know, a few beads might make a difference. Yeah. All right, bagmanship on these, it's ultra, so I'm not going to get too crazy here. Um, the new RSs, they have, you know, the seam locks, and that's kind of a big deal with these. Now, I didn't get these fresh out of the package, so I didn't see the or feel the seam lock that everybody seems to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Craig, I already had these broken in when I got them, and they pretty almost felt normal to me. And not once did I say, hey, this feels thick or anything like that. Uh, so if you get these and you're worried about it, don't be. It's going to go away. And, yes, you can definitely feel that it's different right now. You can. Even, you but... Can. It's not when you're playing. I, didn't, I, I yeah. didn't feel it when I was playing. And I don't know if it's some sort of adhesive or something they use that would makes it the seam lock. Because I mean, Ultra was. It seemed like they were making more posts on Facebook about the break-in process right. and not overdoing the break-in process and boiling them. And I, I wonder if that's why. I wonder if you can somehow agitate that seam lock too much. They haven't really stretched though, so <laughs> right. you know what they're saying is supposed to do. I think it's kind of helping. Yeah, we followed their instructions, so those weren't heated in really any way at all. So mm -hmm. we'll jump into our slide up, and we're going to start with the break-in method. And like I said, we didn't do much. I don't think they need much. I know Ultra has their own break-in or whatever, but I literally just did a water soak on these, put them in a the washing machine on a rinse cycle, just so it tumbled a little bit, and then threw them in the dryer with no heat at all. Just to get that tumble because you know that the pellets have to break in some and the fast side is still a little stiff it's not bad but we accelerate our break in so we can you know get to start learning the bags if you buy these like personally i don't think i would do anything yeah, yeah. other than just throw them and i'm really not a component of only throwing the bags forgiveness on these uh the rs's they're gonna be a little less forgiving uh the Mixed fill is, you know, makes it a little bit more active of bag. So you're going to get a little more movement, uh, even when you're not looking for it. But that's comparing it to one of the most forgiving <laughs> bags ever made, right? Yeah. So uh, that's not a knock at all. Both uh, the RS and the regular R, uh, Ultra Viper R continue to be extremely forgiving bags. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to whole bodiness. And I kind of felt like the RSs had a little bit less whole bodiness than the Rs. And I'll try to explain this. The R's, I mean, they're, they're so floppy. You have such a great chance of just catching that hole. And then, it, you know, the bag's larger and loose, so stuff does move around a little bit. Where I found that the RS's were a little bit better was, like, if something, if it was, like, hung up on the hole for some reason or in front of the roll, hole and hanging half down or even on the back edge or side, you know, another bag hitting the board causing vibration or just barely, you know, touching it, then it would fall in. It's like it had more drip to it, but less whole bodiness as far as catching the hole on your throws. But I don't ever remember the R's, you know, hanging up that much right. to make that comparison. But I guess that's just my thoughts on it. Uh, I'm in line with that. Uh, the one thing that I notice is when you, you know, just running holes and you get one that's just, just off center a little bit, you know, the regular R, the 25 version, it just grab that hole and went in every single time and almost identical throws with the RS would just nip the hole and then just hang up off to the side. They wouldn't grab and go like that. So, which is smaller bag too. So you have yeah. less margin of error also. Yeah. I mean, that has, you know, probably a lot to do with it. And the RS is the same. I've always felt that the, uh, Vipers, ours, just the way the beads move down and move around in the bag, they just seem to move more freely than any other bag for some reason. And the RSs are no different. Uh, so when you get them closed, some bag, them beads are going to move. They're going to go in, and you should definitely get more drip overall with the uh, RSs now. Brings us to collectability, and we're going to disagree on this one. You know, a little bit, I felt that the RSs were better at collecting than the regular Rs. And I, I don't know what the explanation is. It must probably because it's a fuller bag, but it seemed like I personally had a better time collecting with those than I did the Viper Rs. Now, don't get me wrong. I think... Both bags are excellent at uh, collecting. Now, I actually favored the regular R's just because of a little bit bigger template, and maybe this is more of just like a, a forgiveness collect than anything, because these being a little bit smaller, you have to be a little more precise if you're trying mm -hmm. to push a bag in. If you're off that half inch, this may just move over a little bit, similar to what I was saying about how it wouldn't grab the hole quite like the regular R's did. And I think that kind of, I felt the same thing when I was trying to collect. I felt more confident because of that bigger bag. I had, you know, a larger window to hit than mm. I did with the RSs. 
But as far as it comes to hitting the bags, if you do hit your shot, they're both going to collect <laughs> very well. Capable shots, don't have to get too much again because these are Viper Rs. We know they pretty much do everything. The one thing I'll say with the, the mix fill that's, or the, uh, the tribid, or tribrid, like tri hybrid, but tribrid. Uh, well, hopefully we're getting that right. We took a little bit of time. To we nailed that. seam <laughs> lock like the first time, but right, yeah. um, because of that fill, it's you're going to get just a little bit sharper cuts and probably a better opportunity to get a, a bag to roll uh, with the RS than you would the regular R's. Yeah, and I know it's as thin as it's possible, but it's still it does seem a little bit fuller yep. than those because of the smaller template. So. I, I agree. I think it's going to be possible to make all the shots a little bit easier with the RS because people can still do that with the R's. So you can find Ultra on the web at www.ultracornhole.com. They obviously have a Facebook page, which is Ultra Cornhole. And then there's a group you can join, which is Ultra Fans, which I don't know if these Ultra Fans bags were made for that Facebook group or what, but Ultra Fans, like yeah. Join that group, and then a lot of people that throw ultra can answer questions if you have any. Availability on these, the RS is probably still a little tight right now. Uh, as we're recording this video, there is some available on the website. I actually just ordered my, my own set um, yesterday. So keep checking on there. They're going to keep coming out with new colorways and things like that. Uh, currently, they're running a lot of discount codes, and so now's a good time to get them like ultra mm -hmm. normally does with new launches and new designs you get them a little cheaper if you get them right at drop so if you want these bags just stay on the website and grab them when you see available because they're still really hot plus i want to mention that now ultra accepts their pro player discount codes yep. for their bags which last year and probably the previous years it wouldn't work for the bags but it does now so if there isn't a special code available when you go to look yeah. go search facebook because you'll be able to find one of those pro player discount codes and use it final thoughts and Personally, I don't know if I'm ever going to like the RSs more than I like the R's. It's just I, I, I really like the R's. I, I think I like a larger, floppier bag. I did not dislike the RS, however, at all. If someone comes up and has those bags or wants to throw them because they're in my bag, you know, I'm not going to decline at all. Right. It's still a great bag. But I just really like the Viper R. And we were lucky enough to get these RSs, like, that week that they dropped, I know that the people were complaining a lot that it's been almost a week yeah. and they haven't received those bags. So we have been putting that thing through the ringer to see if it would stretch as much. And I, I kind of believe Ultra. I don't think it's going to. Yeah, so far their claims seem to be true. And that's why for me, you know, my final thoughts are I like the RS better <laughs> than the R. You know, you, got, you hear me say it all the time. Hand fill means a lot to me. A little bit of too much flop kind of ruins it. And I can't get comfortable and get a consistent release. And exactly what I was hoping for when I saw these uh, coming out, mm -hmm. that's what they do. So, like I mentioned when I was talking about availability, as soon as we spent a couple weeks throwing these, the new drop came out, and I jumped right on it. So, yeah. um, I'm going to get my you know, my personal set, and I'm going to try gaming them for a while and uh, continue to put them through the ringer. You know, so, if they ever don't hold up to their claims of you know hold, uh, being a better bag as far as the seams holding up, less stretch, not over breaking in and we'll, you know, we'll do a follow-up yeah video, we'll do man. a follow-up video so but hopefully that's not the case and i'm excited to get them and play the crap out of them so we're going to touch on cost and i think we're going with a three bagger now uh for various reasons a lot of companies raised their price this season yeah ultra has not they they kind of seems like they dropped their price a little bit especially with adding the discount codes the pro player discount codes yep. and the bags are now listed on the website for 95 dollars as before, they were always $125 on sale for $95 right. or whatever. So we're giving them a three-bagger for those reasons. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually ended up getting the ones that I ordered with the second drop of the RSs for $89 plus the discount code. So I, I ended up out the door well under $100. Mm -hmm. And for something you know as quality as uh, Viper R, Viper RS, that's a great deal. Mm -hmm. Time last, do we recommend these bags? And I'm going to give the RS a strong yes. If you're like me and you struggled to fall in love with the uh, Viper R like everybody else has, simply because it was a little too floppy, mm -hmm. then the RS is the answer. And especially if you can get them at the uh, the drop rate of under 100 bucks, absolutely recommend these bags. Yeah, I, I could see a reason for having both of these bags in your bag also, yeah. you yep. know, because they are the same but a little different. And yeah. the Viper R, I mean, it's going to be more, you know, run some holes you got a beginner you got a blind draw your partner's a beginner or whatever this is going to be you know more forgiving easier yeah. for them to throw but then you get paired up against someone that's more defensive and you need to cut it a little bit harder or something 
And we didn't even mention how much easier they are to throw air mills either because right. they're the smaller template. So I do recommend them, and I, I don't know if many people carry both basically the same bag, but I think you should have both of them. So we're just going to end this with, if you want to be average or something, may as well be average of cornhole.